This is the Full Stack Sales Pro. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're going to talk about, in this video, the mindset of a seven-figure business owner. Chris, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. L loud and clear. Loud, loud and, and clear. clear. I'm excited. I'm excited for this training because mindset, more than anything else, uh, is really the factor that produces growth. And yeah. it's part thought, part action. And we're just going to break down the journey we've been through for our own mindset, some of the pitfalls that we see for people coming in. And um, if you don't believe that you have what it takes to build something, you'll never build it. And that's why it's important to make sure you have a strong foundation here with the way you think that's going to be conducive to growth. Cool. Good. So what we're going to cover, we're going to talk about DSRs ritual training. We'll talk a little bit about, you know, shaping and tuning your expectations. Um, managing your own expectations is really important and it becomes yeah. uh, significantly more important as you grow. We're going to talk about clarity and focus. Um, again, all of these things, these are foundational elements that are going to set the groundwork for you to get momentum, but then it's now going to be a process of managing that momentum. You can't just eat healthy for one day and then expect for that to uh, reap you the benefits of a healthy life for the rest of your life, right? What? You can't? No, 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 no. You got to be consistent. And Chris tried that. That's, I tried. You know, he's you know, genuinely surprised. But this is the same thing. People think that they can read one book or they can watch this one time. They can do their morning formula one day and then they're confused why they're struggling next, the next week. This is something yeah. you got to do again and again. Um, and then reflection and projection, which we'll get into at the end of this video, which is probably the biggest thing we've learned about mindset since we've been in business. Yes. It's a big deal. Cool. You want to cover this? Stay unsexy. Yeah. Stay unsexy. So here's what? the deal. Yeah, I know you talk about your body a lot, you know, and people are like, what? No, no I don't talk deal. about my body. People talk about my body. <laughs> I don't know I'm about a, all that. I'm the wonder. I'm a wonder of the world. I'm on Instagram. <laughs> Look me up. The eighth wonder. Yeah. All right. So moving on. The hair is sexy. <laughs> the tortoise is not. The tortoise is rich. The hair is not. So what does that mean? That means consistency is the only way to create the results that you want. Don't be that thing that's just like busting out of the gate like the hair and you think you're going to like make all the magic happen by tomorrow. Listen, we've had plenty of people come through and they've made tons and tons of money within their first few days. That's probably not normal though. Okay. Um, so you want to stay consistent. Focus on the process in the actions. Disconnect from the results. And I would say, write this down, highlight it. This is a key. Focus on the process. And if you stay focused on the process and the actions, uh, the results are going to happen. Don't focus on the results. Yeah. Yeah. This reminds me of one time when I go into restaurants or like businesses, you know how a lot of them will have pictures of like the first building or the first restaurant. Yeah. All the way back in the day. I love looking at those because every company that, that you've ever looked up to, they had small beginnings right. and they had to push through things. One of my favorite companies right now is Tesla and reading um, Elon Musk's you know, autobiography and everything that he went through. Everybody starts small. They all have small beginnings. But the key is they all focus on, okay, how do I maneuver and do the right thing now so that I can experience the right result later? Yeah. They're action oriented. Their process is oriented. Absolutely. Yeah, there. real quick, those will catch up. Um, you know, if you do the right things consistently, the results will catch up. Yeah. This is like your favorite quote right here. This is one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. Uh, because this is proving, this is case in point. Uh, this is Tom Seaver, who's a baseball Hall of Famer. And he says, in baseball, my theory is to strive for consistency, not to worry about the numbers. If you dwell on statistics, you get short-sighted. If you aim for consistency, the numbers will be there at the end. And this is true in baseball, it's true in basketball, and it's true in business because business yeah. is, uh, is an elevated sport. It's a game that you have to you know, play the right way if you want to win. And uh, sometimes the best thing for you to do is to not be so obsessed with results goals. So like sometimes you see people are setting goals and like, I want to make a million dollars by the time I'm 20 and I want to do X, Y, Z and I want to have a car and I want to have this. It's like, well, wait, where are the goals for how you want to live? Mm -hmm. Where's the goal for what time you want to wake up in the morning? Where's the goal for what you do on the weekend? A case in point, when I can instantly tell that someone's like tuned up the wrong way and they, they're out of balance, 
is they have no process goals. All their goals are on results, which are lag indicators, but they don't have any goals focused on the lead indicators, which are the things that are going to take them there. Yeah. We'll talk about that more in a little bit, but this is a great quote to, uh, to print okay. on as well. Expectations. This is, uh, this is huge. And I think this is probably going to be, um, this is going to really set the correct trajectory for you. If you don't manage your expectations or if you have the wrong expectations, that will kill you faster than anything else. And, you know, if you're at a place where, well, I just, I'm not sure exactly what to expect guys like on organic, then reach out to the team and ask. But one of the big mistakes that people make when they come in is they might say, man, I, I posted five times on my, my Facebook page and I didn't get any, you know, calls. I didn't get any strategy sessions. You have the wrong expectations. Okay. So you must build the foundation first, then Hold you on. put up the walls. Bro, yeah. one thing I do really good is when I, when I get done talking about points, I ask you if you have anything to add there. And you're not doing that for me, bro. I'm That's sorry, man. I'm that. sorry. You're just moving so fast through this. Now, another example is like, what was this last month where someone got on one of the calls and said, my sales rate is really sucking. I really need help. And it's not very good. And I was like, okay, well, how many calls have you had? And he had five calls. How many people have you enrolled? One enroll, they enrolled one and then did a deposit. Well, that's like almost a 50%. Uh, <laughs> that's really good. His, I don't know what his expectations were. They were obviously that he was going to close every single person he talked to ever. People, yeah. animals, buildings, all of it. But his expectations were also causing him to kind of be too hard on himself. And sometimes that's what you're talking mm -hmm. about, right? Yeah. Um, loosen up maybe sometimes and allow yourself to get into rhythm, make a couple of mistakes and then get going. Yeah. And also now not feel that, on. sorry, not, not like feel that you're behind everybody else, like measuring yourself up against other people. Yeah. Well, we're behind a lot of businesses. If all we did was compare ourselves to people who were ahead of us, we'd be pretty depressed all the time. Yeah. yeah. Got to keep your head down and, and play your game. That's good, man. I like that. Thanks, man. So here's the deal. It would be absurd to put up the core before the walls were built right? Like that would be stupid. So I'm sure you've tried it. Yeah. I've tried it like every day of my life. No, but that is what people, you know, they tend to want to do when they get into the program. You know, they try to put the cart before the horse and it doesn't work yeah. again, sequential order and mastering the process as you go each part of the process. And that's going to build your confidence and your comfort level is going to expand and you have a lot of growth and it's just going to be, become normal right? To post a lot or, you know, have a lot of calls and you'll, you'll find the gauge for you and what works for you. And then you just better the process as you go. Case in point is people who, if you're thinking about like, well, how do I scale? Okay. Well, how many calls have you had and how many clients have you had? Well, I haven't had any clients yet. Well, you are literally like way ahead of yourself. Don't solve that problem. If you solve problems in the wrong order, you kill your business. How do I run traffic? Well, how many organic posts have you had and how many offers have you made? Well, I haven't done any. Well, you know, the walls aren't, aren't even up yet. So you can't be trying to pick out art to put on yeah. them because you, you don't have the walls up yet. So you have to stay in your, in sequence. So the next point, uh, turbulence is necessary. That is part of the process, right? Planes cannot fly without it. Like you need it, you have to expect it welcome it, learn from it, realize that it's only temporary unless you give up. You will not be happy if there is no turbulence. Happiness doesn't exist in a vacuum. You have to have something to push against or else there's no fulfillment, there's no breakthrough, there's no success. All of the things that make a human being happy and fulfilled, it all comes back to having some resistance to push through. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Do you mind? And bro, you can just say anything thing. you want right now. Yeah, speaking of planes, and you know I love to say this, is there are going to be times that you might feel like you want to bail. Like you're like, oh man, this is hard. Like people aren't responding or they're not engaging or this or that. And so here's the deal. You must realize that there is no bailing allowed. Like we do not bail on you in this process. What do I always say? We don't pack, pack a, a parachute. parachute. Man, you got it. We don't pack a parachute on this journey, so we don't expect you to. Like, don't quit. Don't give up on yourself, okay? 
just want to make sure I put that out there. Bro, I mean, if you got it, you got to share it, man. All right, cool. <laughs> Moving right along. Mental clarity and focus. What we're going to ask of you is that you take just as much care, you know, yourself and your growth as, a, as an individual and just as much time on that as you do on your marketing. Well, mm -hmm. Why? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Isn't this a marketing program? No, this is a business program designed to help you build a consistent, enjoyable, in charge of your own life business. Yeah. And that's going to require you to grow up in some areas and morning formula is going to help that. Um, and we'll talk about it on the next slide because we have that written out for you. Um, another key is surrounding yourself with positive people and being ruthless about cutting out the negative, anyone who's negative or stressful. Yeah, that's going to be hard. And we see that happen fairly often where someone will say, man, my family member, my mom, my dad, my husband, my wife, uh, my brother, my sister, like they're really telling me I can't do this. And, you know, you have to take it. It's a sensitive situation. But there are times where if you are not already just a relentless person, and you're resilient and you're just like, I don't care what anybody says or thinks, I'm just going to do this. Um, you got to have time, give yourself time to get there mentally. And that might be creating distance with those people who are being negative and causing stress in your life, a part of this process. So I know that might feel kind of like strange and awkward and uncomfortable, but you have to do it. You have to separate yourself for at least the time. So... It's just yeah, me. Chris cut out his own mother. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> that would be awful. I love my mom. She's the sweetest. Um, but yeah, my mom is go, my biggest fan. For she real. is. Like, if you see all of Taylor's comments, she's the first one that likes them. That's um, true. Real quick though, like when when all your family makes like, or the majority of your family and friends make maybe five grand, six grand a month, seven grand, and you're shooting to make thirty, fifty, a hundred, that's a huge difference right? It's, it's life changing. Um, and so it's going to take some stretching and growth on your side to get there and be okay. Yeah. With and at times dealing with those relationships, it's going to be a rocky road, like the ice cream. Just got to make it through. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. You ready to move on then? <laughs> yeah. Talk real quick about creating a winning environment. Okay. So this is you know, this is the people that you're surrounded with. These are, this is the things that you have around you. So Chris and I were, were pretty on purpose about designing our own environment. One time I was eating sushi with a young guy and he wanted to get into business and he actually worked for our company for a while. And he was like, he's one of those young guys who's hungry and he's always asking questions. And he said, you know, what do you think is like the biggest secret to getting su successful? And I had to think about it because it's like a heavy question. There are a lot of things that make a person successful or unsuccessful. And uh, what I answered back to him was it's, it's your environment. Mm -hmm. a, a strong person in a bad environment will lose to a weak person in a good mm -hmm. environment. That's so good. it's oftentimes not about your own, well, I'm going to grit through this and like, I'm just, you know, we talk about re resiliency and everything, but the environment is setting the odds in your favor. It's stacking the deck in your favor. And yes. if every, every night you're going out with friends who uh, are disempowering and they're negative and they stress you out, you're not going to make it. Yep. Like it doesn't matter how good your offer is. It doesn't matter how resilient you are as a person. Your environment is literally set up to destroy you. Yep. And so you've got to create a winning environment and the people you hang out with, and then surrounding yourself with things that remind you of abundance and remind you of success mm. and, and, you know, books and whatever it is that floats your boat. Yeah. Yeah. Cut out the negativity. That's huge. Yeah. Huge. I mean, we could go on that for a long time. Yeah, yeah, we could. And dude, I mean, we both have stories. You know, I remember when I first started getting in some, some measure of business success. And this isn't like where we are now. This is like, I was making 15 K a month as a freelancer. And, uh, there were three or four people that I had to stop spending time with mm -hmm. because, um, every time I would hang out with them, there was a little bit of jealousy and like, they would kind of make fun of me, uh, about just random stuff that doesn't even matter. And you could tell that they were sort of jealous, you know? Yeah. 
And that was kind of keeping me, I felt like I was having to defend myself all the time, which is very, that is very bandwidth intensive. It sucks yeah. your thinking power. And I just remember talking to my wife and she's like, why do you hang out with them? I was like, oh, I don't know. They're my friends. Like I've been friends with them forever. And at this point, you know, they follow me on Instagram and stuff, but we're, we're not really close friends anymore because the reality is that I've grown and they haven't. And that's not my fault. I don't level down, right? Level up. So hang around with the people who are producers and not consumers. Chris doesn't hang out with anybody unless they're on his level. He's like way more intense about this than I am. For real. Like that's not a diss. That's like you do it really well. You hang out with people who aren't going to bring you down and you pretty much don't give a crap about what they think. You just do the right thing for you. Here's the difference. If people do want to level up, and they're like, man, I, I want to do what you're doing or I want to be successful. Then they have like the winning attitude, right? That they are worth the investment. But if someone is just like, they just want to suck at life, they don't have any ambition to move forward and change the world and do great things. Um, I don't think that's a great investment of my time. I'd rather invest my time into you guys. People who are actually making a difference in the world. Um, and doing huge things. So make sure you protect your environment. It's key. Cali, we just, we could go on and on. So let's just jump into the, the morning formula. Cool. All right. This is the morning formula. So Chris and I both have, both have this and uh, I'm just going to go through it quickly. And Chris, I think the best way to do this is you just pause me. If you have questions and you can kind of interview me about it. Yeah. Cause I'm just going to go through it quickly. What I've done is I've created a Google doc and I've just written about myself uh, in third person, because that makes me feel cool when I read it every morning <laughs> and, um, talking about my identity, who I want to be. And, um, if you haven't read the book, psycho cybernetics, it's going to be great. It's going to add your clarity and, and understanding how this process works. So I'm just going to read through, you know, Taylor is a successful and highly respected marketer entrepreneur, he and his business partner specialize in blah, 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 live in a $780,000 house in Franklin. They make X amount of dollars per year, best and highest quality go-to people. They've created an empire, an absolute control over their business. And you can see that there are goals in here that aren't just money. What time I want to wake up? How many, you know, I take a three-day weekend every month. How I feel, like my revenues, you know, revenues generated without us provides freedom as a business should. There's a lot more in here than just how much money. So real quick, what is the, like, the main purpose of like, why do we have a morning formula? Well, if you leave it up to chance, then you're going to find yourself waking up and becoming the person that you feel like being. You have no choice yeah. in the matter. You know, sometimes I wake up and I'm in a great mood and I'm like, dude, I could rip a tree out of the ground and nobody can stop me. And I would literally right. just like destroy everyone. And then sometimes I wake up and I'm like pissed as hell. I want to quit. And I have no idea like what I'm even doing with yeah. my life. Well, if you don't have a way to throttle that and create consistency, you're in trouble. You can't project, you can't be the person you want to be. So this makes your identity a choice. You become this person, you become consistent and you get to decide, you know, you got to ask yourself to achieve the things I want to achieve, to make the money that I want to make, what kind of person do I need to become? And this is how you do that. Yeah. And uh, you know, just to say like, there, there's going to be a lot of things thrown at you, right? We've already talked about that. And I'd say the morning formula is really like a, a recalibration tool. So like mm. as you're thrown off course and you just might, at some points you, you're going to feel like you're in a tailspin. Something happens in life or something happens in business. And we have story after story after story of just stuff thrown at us. But this is like our recalibration. We can come in here, go through our morning formula and say, okay, this is who I am. And this is who I'm choosing to be. And we have right. clarity on what we need to do to make sure that we're staying on course for what we want in life. Yeah. And it's not, um, some people think this, well, this sounds a little woo woo guys. I thought you guys were professional consultants who understood business. Well, literally everything I've put on this list has happened mm -hmm. and I keep having to redo it to make up new stuff. You know, I had a Tesla model S and got that I had a, my original one was like $560,000 house. We got that. Like everything that I've put on here has happened. And the same with Chris. And so 
you can think it's woo woo all day long and I'm going to laugh at you while I take my money to the bank. You know, you can follow this or you cannot. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Um, and then I go into just some goals that we have for the year. So this is some of my yearly goals. Um, and these are things like, you know, I want us to be removed from the dips and the flows of business. I want us to be protected and removed from that. Uh, having time freedom, not having to go in anymore. You know, we've spent a lot of time on the grind and hustle and, you know, we want to be in a place now where we're building out the time freedom, uh, removed from the tier three activities. I've spent hours and hours and hours on this yeah, uh, and eat and probably 20, 30 minutes a day reading through it. Hey, can I just add something real quick to, um, if you have a spouse, I'd recommend getting with them on this as well. Once you've gone through this process, because you know, they're on this journey and our goal is not to create a distance in your marital relationship. And so it's good for you to get on the same page. Now, listen, Taylor and I, we are, we don't stop. We push, we push, we push, uh, we drive, we have huge goals and our spouses might not always be like, man, like they're right there with us. But it's important, I think, in that relationship to have this communication, say, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going, and I just wanna be on the same page with you. So I just wanna throw that out there because a lot of people don't talk about that, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And you want their support, you know, and they're gonna benefit from what you're doing here as well. Yeah, you don't necessarily need them to be on the same level as you like cognitively, professionally, because I tried to get my wife to do this and she was like, no. <laughs> Like I'm not yeah. doing, I'm not spending my time on that. She was like, you're not my boss. And my wife is awesome. She is a very successful hairstylist, but she just doesn't care about any of this stuff. Like, so I think it's important, you know, some people will ask, well, what if my wife doesn't want, or what if my spouse doesn't want to grow as fast as I do? Well, that's okay. Yeah. Um, as long as they're focused on being your biggest fan, which I know Missy for you, she is definitely your biggest fan. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Even though if you tried to get her to like get involved and do this and run your business, she would kill all of us. Yes. <laughs> and we're all scared of her in a good way. But good point. Good point. Keep going or you, you got anything else to add to this? No, that's it. Um, and then so on the next page, I've just got some pictures here. And this is talking about going back to creating a winning environment. This stuff makes me feel uh, happy and successful. And that I want to be this black man. <laughs> with this bicep and it look at that vein i mean dude this guy's got skills he's got a physique uh but this this is a sh from a show called billions and chris's looks different than mine like mine is kind of this is my stuff mine but is this guy, of the show little house on the prairie yeah chris wants to be he wants this to be uh i want to be paul Ingalls. dude you kind of look like him grow the beard yeah. out a little bit yeah so this is from a show called Billions. This just makes me like, I don't know what it is about this, but it reminds me of like corporate success. Um, we've got some goals, cash in the bank, things like that. I want to look like this guy. This reminds me, I want to eat well. I don't want to just go to five guys every day, even though I want to. I Jets don't pizza. want to. Jets pizza. Um, and this is one of the places that we like to visit in St. Thomas. And I don't know, like seeing these pictures kind of reminds me that hey, I'm playing at a different level. Yeah. Um, and it, it gets me into thinking about big numbers and big term. Cool. I like it. And then I've got rules. And this is something I took from the guy who is running early to rise right now. Is it uh, Craig Valentine? Valentine. Yeah. yeah. And this is his book, the perfect day formula and, and rules that define your life. <clears throat> mm. And reading through these in the morning reminds me of like, like the lead indicators, you know, it's not all, None of these rules are focused on results. These are all focused on what are the inputs that yep. create a successful life for me. I want to spend an hour a day working on myself, reading a book or watching training, um, journaling, meditating, etc. I want to spend 45 minutes to an hour, five to six days a week exercising. I want to work from a to-do list and I don't want to just be random and like not knowing what I'm getting done. I want to wake up at the same time every day. Um, just real quick on that. A lot of times when you, when you're off and you're not hitting your goals and you're, you're just like, you're in a funk, a lot of times source it's sourced back to that, that you're not doing those things. You're not following your own rules. And so you don't have the outcomes because you're not, you don't have the input, right? You don't have the stuff going yeah. in. Yeah. So good. 
It's true. Um, and this, this page is just the different, some different principles that kind of help me think correctly. Again, if you don't, if you don't determine as a choice how you want to think, then you're going to just be left at random. Yeah. And you're going to have to think however you feel like thinking. There's just some things that I've found and I've put into here. So I read them every day. Um, things like, you know, producing results is more important than proving you're right. Well, if you get that into your psychology and that becomes how you think, you're not going to engage in arguments on Facebook. You're, you're just not going to care what people think. And so this is stuff that over the t over years has defined who I am. You have this too, right, Chris? Yeah. And this is the theater of the mind. So this is like one of the last pages. And when you read Psycho Cybernetics, you'll kind of see that. So this is like what I do in the morning, um, how I want my days to go. When I close my eyes, this is the the life that I want to have. And I read this all the time and visualize that. One year goals. And then affirmations, like I call this constructive imagination. It's actually going through and reading some of these. I don't read all of these every day, but I read probably two or three a day and just kind of go through them. Beautiful. Make, make sense? Yeah, it's great. So you guys go do that. Um, and you don't have to do it in one sitting, but just take some time over the next several days and fill that out at least get started on it and then yeah. make it a daily activity yeah so moving right along cool projection and reflection this is possibly the single biggest lesson we've learned about growing our business which is you know it's a rather healthy client business i'd it's you know venture to say like in record speed um, i would say not venture definitely guaranteed record speed I actually so, don't know another company on the planet who's done what we've done as fast as we've done it. Just put that out there. Yeah. And you don't either. I know you don't. All right. Take us through this. Yeah. So here's the deal. The way you treat others is a way you're going to be treated. If you're a, just a jerk to everybody, you know, people are probably going to be jerks to you. If you don't pay your bills, if you don't pay money that you owe people, people aren't going to pay you. Clients are going to pay you. You need to be the person that you want other people to act towards you, right? It's kind of like the golden rule situation. The problems or the objections you're going to experience from your prospects and your clients, those are the same problems or objections that you are prone to yourself. For example, mm -hmm. if you come in here and you just complain or you act like a little <laughs> right? Or you don't follow the process, guess what? Your clients are gonna do the same. Or if you took forever to make a decision uh -oh. to jump in here, all right, now we're hitting you where it hurts, but this yeah. is all, all out of love. If you took seven years to make a decision that you wanted to jump into this and invest in yourself, I guarantee you we're going to be on a call in a couple of weeks and you're going to be like, I just can't get this prospect to commit and be like, I know <laughs> it's because that's how you projected it onto other people. That's just something you got to fix. You got to work yeah. on and you got to understand that you project your beliefs, your behaviors, your expectations onto the people around you. Everybody does it and then they wonder why people are acting that way towards them and it starts with you. It's really weird how tangible this actually is. You know, yeah. like it sounds like, uh, you know, they might be <clears> saying, <throat> oh, I don't know, like, I don't know if I believe that, but I'm telling you from experience, our own lives in our own business, just seeing client after client after client after client. The guys who come in, they take crazy action, they pay their bills, guess what? That's what they experience with their clients. Dude, okay. if you are, let's just go ahead and, I want this actually to mean and help people. Yeah. So uh, I'm not trying to ins insult anybody, but if you are thinking, I don't know, I don't know if I believe this. Well, you got a stupid loop going on and you need to go figure out why you feel that way and fix it. I don't know about you, Chris, but if Elon Musk comes in here and he says that he wears polka dotted pink underwear, I'm going to Amazon. I'm buying some polka dotted pink underwear. I'm pretty sure There's you already own those. <laughs> <laughs> the people who have the results and the success that you want, that's something you need to model. Yeah. So if you're, if you do find yourself thinking, Oh, this sounds a little, I don't know if I believe this, you got something that's potentially going to hang you up in the future because for some reason, um, you think that, that you know best, but this is a real principle. It's a real law. You got to be wary of your projections yeah. and understand and leverage them 
you know, via this law of the mirror. You can yeah. call it. And it all, it comes to on every part of what you're doing. You know, so when you're organic posting your webinar, you're communicating there, your ads, like every, everybody projects their beliefs, their behaviors, their expectations onto other people. And so if you don't work on that right now, when you go out and you start posting organically or you start writing ads, or you start working on your webinar, then that lack of confidence or all these other things you might have going on, those quote issues, those are going to be projected onto the people that you're trying to communicate with. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. Give me an, give me an example. We have a guy right now who's a client. He's awesome. Fantastic copywriter. If he's listening to this, you know, he's going to be honored that he made it into this, this video, but he keeps saying, I don't know why, like people keep asking me if I do traffic and then they don't want to buy because I, I don't do traffic. I'm a copywriter. I'm like, well, you're probably projecting that fear onto people. No, I, I'm not. I'm not projecting it. Well, you probably are like, well, I listened to a call and he's literally like telling people, you know, we have to run traffic to this, but I don't do traffic. And he's like, he's literally projecting that all over people. Yeah. And then therefore people are like, well, if, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I can't make it work without traffic, then I don't know what to do. And it's coming back to him. Most mm -hmm. of the problems that you're facing are, you know, you're projecting it onto other people. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's good. What does this mean? This means the best way to attract your dream clients is to become, become your, dream, your client. dream client. That's right. If That's you want really decisive action-taking prospects and clients, then you need to become decisive and action-taking. If you want to get paid on time, not have to follow up and figure out how to get paid, then make sure you're the one who always pays on time. If you want testimonials, case studies, positive client ex experiences, then you got to decide that you're going to be the first person to give other people case studies and testimonials and positive experiences. Yeah. This is just the truth. I'm just telling you guys what's true. Yep. And this is what we live. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. If you want your clients to follow instructions, then you follow instructions. Don't always try to be rebellious and buck in the system. Okay. If you want your clients to actually do the work and not disappear, create momentum, have a positive attitude, not be a little B, then you know where we're going with this. Bro, I just had the thought that we should give this video to our wives. Oh my gosh. I don't know. If you want an attractive, serve-oriented serve spouse, then you be an attractive, <laughs> serve-oriented. Oh my gosh, we're gonna get so much hate for that. That's a bad idea. Cool. Yeah. yeah, here's a deal, real quick. Most people think they have marketing or business problems, when really, they just have life problems, and they're projecting those bad behaviors and attitudes onto everybody else. It's got to stop. No amount of marketing is going to account or make up for a sloppy life, bad attitudes, or poor behavior. Yeah. You are going to attract exactly the kinds of people that fit into your own, you know, behavioral constructs. So you got to fix those first. That's why one of the most important things is literally like getting wins here with your mindset. Yeah. That's, that's the first key. We say it all the time, plant, cultivate, then harvest. Make sure you, you know, you got to fix your thoughts and get your morning formula, get all that stuff. And that determines the actions that you take. And then those actions determine your results. Beautiful. You like that? I like that so much. I put those Homework. servers on there myself. <laughs>